collection of my youtube video and this video is actually a beginner friendly on how to um, sew using your manual machine so in my next video i make how to sew using your industrial machine so and how to set it up as well how to set up your industrial machine so so for this we are just majorly going to focus on manual machine and everything that has to do with manual so first thing first let's dive right in into naming the parts so when you get your machine you get your machine this part is going to be separate this part is going to be separate but then make sure you tell them to couple it for you and to set this machine for you this actual part to set it for you to be able to um sew your fabrics well enough because by the time you get some and you don't get to um, they don't get to set it for you you're still going to pay someone or get someone over to set it up for for you so it will be up and running so back to the part of uh your manual machine so we have the balance wheel yes or the hand wheel i should name this as the major part because if this part gets caught in your manual machine you can't you won't be able to sew that's just the plain truth so these are um, one of the most important parts of your machine so this is the balance wheel for hand wheel now this is your spool pin it actually comes in two one two yes but i have one left with me so aside we also have we also have our stitch regulator but stitch regulator is facing me right now if you're looking at your um, machine right now you see the stitch regulator is at the side okay the right hand side so this is your stitch regulator and this is your lifter yes pressure bar lifter it's its function is actually uh, when you lift it up it releases your fabric when you put it down it holds down your fabric so its function is actually to hold down your fabric for you to sew yes so that your fabric will not start moving from the right to the left especially when you turn on your fan so your fabric will just stay put now this is the um feed dog this section this plate section is the feed dog now this is your needle and this is your needle clamp so and this is your pender yes this is your pender so you can either decide to use your pender or if you don't want to use your pender you can get um there's this uh, machine they get that um i think it's so it's been so probably by now it should be up to five thousand naira or not more than five thousand they call it moto yes when you get to a tailoring shop or they'll direct you to where you can get it but when you get to a tailoring shop it's just a motto they'll give it to you it's something you plug it uses lights you plug it to your, your electricity you just have to put your foot in it controls you have to control your um, balance wheel or your hand wheel so that way it saves you from using your leg to you know handle so that's just it guys so these are some of the few parts the few most important parts of your manual machine so when you get your manual machine um you would need to hoil your oh yeah so why do you hoil your man, uh, manual machine you actually hoil your manual manual machine because of the noise and you don't want um friction to occur to start scraping each other you get so when you want to oil your manual machine actually the oil comes the oil 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 that comes with your manual machine is actually in a transparent small container but most times it gets finished on time and you oil once every month or once every month maximum yes once every month minimum just once every month or twice every month it depends on you and depends on how often you use your um, machine so mine got finished out to get this um machine oil when you get to your tailoring shop just tell them machine oil it was i got it like three years back it's been sold for 250 but you could actually probably now maybe it's up to 500 or 700 you know the way things are on the high side right now so when you get your oil or the one that comes with your machine the first thing you do once you get to is to oil your machine so you see this big hole right here so once you get some the first thing you have to do is to oil your machine so you see this big hole right here you take your oil and i have to um, create all here using a needle so you take your oil and you put a drop don't just overput it don't pour everything you don't want it to be too greasy 
So you take a, um, your oil and put a drop. Then for me, I just put drops in every O I see, every little O. Yes, you should oil every part of the lip shape. So that's it, guys. So once you've done this, once you've done this, you then go over to this section of your machine. Yes, this wheel of your machine. So you come this particular part where there's um, this this where the rolling actually this this um, round place and this place. I don't know how to describe it. You take your oil. You put it there so that's it guys most times some people um, advise you also oil your the knots where the knot is some people also advise you don't oil where the knot is um, is so for me i don't even know the right one but sometimes i have i am oil the um, heart where there's the knots sometimes i don't when it comes to my um, further and my um the wheel so it all depends on you, but mostly this place and this place are the major parts that require oiling. So once you're done with um, that, once you're done with oiling, the next thing is you need to learn how to move your machine. So for this, you cut out a piece of fabric. So I have a piece of fabric right here. So for this, you cut out a piece of fabric, you raise your um bar mixture and okay before then i'm missing some parts i ought to tell you about this part as well yes it escapes me sorry about that so this is your bobby or it's called um rila when you get to you know no man nigeria the way they change names so when you get to your nigeria market it's called rila or bobby so this is called this part is called your shuttle yes so for this if you look beneath this place, I'll do a more zoom out video and I'll um, show it up here. I'll place it up here for you to see. So in this place, this is how it is. Um, you place it, you, you take out the thread. You make sure you bring out um, a little length um, of the thread. Then you place it like this. You take it through this place. And voila, you bring it to this open space. Then you take it and you put it in in that place, then you close. So that's it, guys. So before then, if you just bought your machine and you still do not know how to pedal with your machine, then the first thing I would advise you to do is don't bother to trade for now. Don't bother to trade. Just cut out a piece of fabric. So it's just a few a little trick so you place your you place your cut out a piece of fabric you place it on the feed dog let it press on the feed dog then you put down your lifter now once you put down your lifter to pedal you have to make sure this wheel comes towards you at the beginning so this is it you take you take this um wheel and you put it in, in the so as you can see this fabric moves outward so that's the right direction that your fabric should move when you are learning how to sew it might be tricky but if you keep practicing as i say practice makes perfect if you keep practicing for like a week or two trust me you'll be perfect at it so whenever you're making a mistake of your fabric going inward like this, you know you are doing the wrong thing. You know you are staying towards the wrong direction. Well, you place your fabric the right, you take your wheel, bring it to yourself. This is the right direction. You take your wheel, roll it to yourself, and start pedaling. Take your wheel, roll it to yourself, and start pedaling. Your wheel, roll it to yourself, and start pedaling. You do this for like a week or two. You're going, to do that. It's, you're going to be very, very, very extremely good at it. So, you know, as I say, practice makes perfect. So, that's that's for if you don't want to pedal, you bring it to yourself, 
and you start it. You bring it to yourself and you start it. So do this for a week straight. Then once you are good with making sure the fabric goes towards the right, um, um, right direction, that is going outward, the next step is knowing how to thread your machine. So this is it. So the first thing first is you need to reel your reeler. So you take your reeler from beneath here. Um, there's a video, um, a detailed video that I zoomed out um, where it is and all of that. So you take it out and I already have a thread in this um, bobbin or reeler or reel. Then you could either use this section, this part um, facing you, or you take your pin, the spool pin, you take it before then you take your reeler, you place your thread like this, round it on your reeler. Then you take this spool pin, you put it through it, you take this wheel, you bring it to yourself, it's like you're going. You bring it to yourself and you turn it. Then you can take it and you place it. You can see? I'm doing it. So that is it, guys. So once you're done with this, you cut out and make sure there's a piece of thread hanging out. Then you put it through it. You take it through this place. Through this place. You bring it through this place and through here. So this is it. Then you place it back. You place it back. So after placing back, the next thing is treading this place. So in treading this particular place, you bring it here, you place your thread, you bring out some length of thread, you place your thread here, and then you bring, um, turn it over here, like this on the lids here, then you come here and you put it here, through here, as you can see, through this place, then you take it and pass it through this place, then you take the edge, you see this, um, um, this thing here, yeah, this iron here, yeah, I don't know what to call it, you put it through it. Then after putting it through it, there's one, there's this small hook that comes out, pops out of this um, particular um, steel, this shiny steel, you put it through it. Then the next thing is putting your thread through the needle. So once you put it through the needle, the next thing is you need to bring out the thread that you put in that gorilla that is underneath this um, um, fuse dog. So you take your thread, you make sure you already put your thread in this needle. Yes, your thread is already in the needle. So you hold your thread like this. You take your needle and put it in. Your wheel, make sure you're bringing it to yourself. Put it in, then you bring it out. So it's as simple as that. Now, once you have this two outside, you put it underneath. Once you have the two outside, like this, then you put your fabric. That's once you know how to pedal. The next thing is, once you know how to pedal very well, the next thing is learning how to pedal with your thread. Now, once you've um, placed your thread just the way I, um, I have said it, the next thing is to learn how to sew a straight line on the fabric. That might be a little bit tricky or tacky, but just try as much as possible to perfect because it's gonna, it's, you're gonna need that skill in the long run. Let's say you're having a fabric, it has to be straight. Imagine a bent in, it's not a bent um, stitch in the sewing, it's not gonna look good at all. So it's best, um, you start practicing it now. Don't just overlook it like probably you sew and it's still having some curves and just a bit. I can't kill myself. Fine, you can't kill yourself, but just make sure you practice it and be good at it over time. So you take your wheel to yourself and you start. Tell you about the double stitching. This stitch regulator regulates your um, stitching. So when it's in this um, this video right here, just please just look at this video right here. When it's in this seven, seven six or 
senses. It's when it's in seven, let's just start from seven. When it's below the seven, it means the gestation is going to be very good. Yes, very good. Not a newborn nose. So when it's between seven and six, it's still gonna be loose, but not that loose. When it's ten, six, uh, ten, eight, um, it's getting a little bit tight. Sixteen, twelve, tight. Thirty, twenty, extremely tight. So when you want to sew um, an outfit, it's best you leave it at this seven, six. Now leaving it at seven, six, leaving it at seven, six or ten, eight. Um, gives you room for in case you want to amend amend your cloth um, you won't have issue of your cloth and ending um, um, tearing out or or causing more damage to the cloth i don't know if i'm making sense because once you leave it at 30 20 or 15 12 it might be difficult for you to lose in the trade for you to lose the trade or cost the trade at the end of the day you may end up cutting up the um the tearing up that particular um, um place so it's best if you are sewing you leave it as 10, 8. Now, if you want to, once you've learned how to sew a straight line, the next thing is you, you, you should learn how to um, um, practice your stitching, your double stitching and all of that. So this is it, guys. So you put your you put down your pressure bar foot on the fabric and you take it towards you. You double stitch, you double stitch, you, double stitch. you just do it twice. Then you continue sewing. That is it. Then when you get to the end of the sewing, you also want to go back to the Your fabric will be moving to and fro, to and fro twice. That way, you double stitching is you tied the stitching here and you've also tied the stitching here. So these are just the few tricks. So if you practice this for like a month, you should be good, trust me. You should be good with you sewing. Then from this, you can then graduate a month. A month is even too big. If you do it, it's an everyday thing for you. Let's say you take two hours of a day to practice how to sew, two or three, four hours to practice how to pedal and sew. Within two weeks, or let's say within two weeks maximum, you should be good with you um, sewing and all of that. So these are just the little tricks that um, is involved in sewing. Now, just in case um, um, you don't want to paddle, there's also an easy way out. You get, you get to buy a motor, it's called a motor. You can buy it either at the tailor shop or the direct you to where you can get it from. So that motor, um, it uses electricity actually, it uses light. So when you um, plug it to your socket, you turn, it, um, turn your socket on, once you put your foot in it, it starts making it and start moving. There's a way you connect it, it starts moving the balance with the wheel. So you have to direct your wheel and then press the um, the bottle and start moving. So no need for you to be pedaling with your foot. All you have to do is to pull one leg on the bottle like this. It's a small, it's a small black shaped um okay, it's a small black color um kind of it's small. I don't know how to describe it, but once you get your tailor shop, they get it for you. So just make sure you get a good one and make sure to try it out or just make sure it's a trusted vendor that you get it from so that in case it's bad you could easily um once you get home and you try it it's not good you could easily um return it back so um although that motto can be a little bit fast like fast so i advise you first of all learn how to product with your machine so that once you uh, start using that motto even if it's very fast in time um, you learn how to control it, but if you are just a beginner and you decide to buy the motor onto it, it's going to confuse you. So just first of all, get used, embrace your sewing machine, get used to your sewing machine. Then after you've gotten used to your sewing machine, your sewing machine is now your best friend, you can go ahead, buy your motor to make work and um, work less easier for, um, um, I said less easier, less difficult for you. Yes, less difficult for you. So guys, those are just a few tricks and those are just how to sew your sewing machine and make sure you always clean up your sewing machine and if your machine is having issue actually this is not the um, um elastic that came with it there's actually a red band that comes with it it's already um it's easily fixed as you can see the way i connected it it's easily fixed so you could even still go go it out to fix it now if that gets bad there's no need to worry 
all you have to do is to buy a tiny elastic of 28 inches then tie it you can see the way i tied mine tie it and then connect it to the wheel yes so it's as simple as that so this can also replace the red um because with time that's red band gets to one house so it's as simple as abc so guys i hope this was um quite this was interesting for you and i hope you get to learn so once you keep on practicing as ahelia said keep on practicing practicing makes perfect you get every fashion designer that you've seen at a point in their life they have to sit down and learn how to product so it's not something new it's not something that okay someone will tell you oh i bypassed it even if you started learning at a very tender age, you still learn how to fail first at that tender age before you learn how to start sewing. So once you are good at this, then you cannot graduate to sewing cloth, uh, making um, amending clothes, probably so that from few of the clothes you want to um, slim, uh, slim fit, um, hold the side, you could then place them on the machine and learn. So from there, you are becoming good at it. From there, you graduate to you cutting your fabric and sewing. I've always said that the major thing when it comes to, although this is not part of your sewing machine, but the major thing when it comes to fashion designing is if you want to be a tailor, you need to learn how to cut. Now, if you are able to cut your basic um, bodies, basic bodies, your basic, um, the upper body block and the skirt and your trousers, you are able to cut all those things, you are good to go. From there, you should be able to, all these new, new styles coming out, these trendy styles, you should be able to, you know, think it's all about thinking being creative or upgrading yourself so you should be able to think and you know okay how do they go about it how do they go about this then the one that is quite different for you let's say you don't have to sew a hood you could get to go and buy a hood um a hoodie and you see the sewing the way they sew it and all of that then you gobble more on gobble is your friend gobble is my friend gobble is everyone's friend so you gobble more on okay if i do okay um, what measurement should I take? Okay, you you just practice. That's why your pattern paper is good. You practice, or you could get a fabric that is um, six years for like one five years. There are fabrics like that, although they are not that strong, but it's just for you to practice. So you practice with those fabric. Over time, you become good with it. So that's just it. It's all about practicing. Fashion design and tailoring, in particular, it's about practicing. Now, with that, after that, you you should make sure your works your work is neat yes your work has to be neat so with time that you are good with this teaching you are good to go so guys i hope um i was able to show you guys and before i forgot these will definitely come with your machine and inside it definitely a free needle for me i've uh, gotten more than <laughs> the needles i have new needles this 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 is the press of foot so the screwdrivers probably if you want to mm -hmm, screw up some things um, loosen up some screws and all of that so so guys this is it and i hope this video was detailed enough for you if you want to pedal bring it to yourself and you know so that's it guys so I hope this video was detailed enough for you and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you in my next video. So, ciao!